Hello everyone, Josh Schreiber here for WMUA Sports and I'm going to be doing a little bit of a film breakdown series on all of the UMass quarterbacks coming into the 2023 season. So I'm really excited to get a look at all of the, uh, the specifically the new quarterbacks, but also a more in-depth look at Brady Olsen as well. So those four quarterbacks, we're going to start off with Carlos Davis today. We also have Tyson Fomachon, Ahmad Haston, and of course Brady Olsen. So Without further ado, let's get started with Carlos Davis. All right, so let's discuss Carlos Davis. So Davis is a transfer from Western Carolina. Um, they are an FCS school in the Southern Conference, so that's why a lot of the footage you're going to see, especially right here in the, from this game, is really not very good. Just um, their camera. This was honestly, this is how it looked on the video itself. Uh, had nothing to do with the actual um editing process at all so just bear with me there but um carlos davis is the first quarterback we have for the film breakdown um my main notes on him um that i want to start with are first and foremost he is a great athlete he can run he is fast he's agile he can make guys miss in open field um that's something i really like about him and really like about quarterbacks in general so these first clips I'm going to play them, mostly running clips. Um, that I just liked what I saw. He is a lot faster than any linebacker, as you see here. Uh, just really blows by them with ease and then can't quite get past the defensive backs, but they are way ahead of him. They got a head start there, so um, I, I do like his athleticism. One thing that worries me a little bit, he takes some hits. As you see there, that was just an abrupt halt to his running, which can kind of hurt when it comes to the lower body and as you saw there also got taken down pretty hard davis ended up coming out of this game just a couple plays after this one i think it was on the fourth down or third down um where he came out with a lower body injury did not come back in the rest of the game i think that he has to do a better job sliding and just getting down and avoiding these big hits because they're going to wear and tear um, it, it's going to come back and bite, especially when you pl start to play teams like an Auburn, like a Penn State, like an Army that you're going to see this season. Um, and you just can't, you can't take those hits over the course of a season. So um, that's the main thing that I see with his running ability. Now with that running ability comes um, being able to avoid sacks, being able to extend plays. Um, and he does a really great job of doing that with his legs at times. Uh, we're going to see a couple plays here where I, I thought he did a particularly nice job doing it. So um, here he rolls out to the left, just a nice touch pass over the number 44 right there. Nothing crazy. And then again here, rolling out to his right in the spring game, makes a nice strong throw to the sidelines, perfect ball. Um, and we're, we're going to see another clip of it right here. But Carlos Davis does not have the strongest arm, which I'm going to get into a little bit la later. So he does need to kind of use his legs a lot. You're going to see here, at, even as he's rolling out, he really gets a pretty strong base and uses his legs a lot here. Watch right here. He really uses his legs to make that throw um, and make it a strong one. Now... Outside of using his legs to extend plays, he is also very good at throwing to sidelines. I have about three clips coming up here where I thought he did a really nice job throwing to the sideline. Good, strong, accurate throws. So this one was a touchdown right there. Perfect on the money right in the bread basket of the receiver. Nowhere that the, re that the defensive back could get to it. Now again here, a little bit further down the field makes that throw. Perfect timing perfect accuracy um and that was just a great job by davis now going to back to the Furman game this was not towards really to the sideline but has his receiver wide open here just gonna make it it's a little behind him but i think that was totally intentional because you don't want to lead him too far to the sideline where he has to make a difficult catch um just let him go up grab that ball and bring it down with him for the easy first down so those were some of the plays that I really liked. All right, real quick, here's another play that I is not throwing to the sideline, but this is probably my favorite throw that I saw of him throughout every 
all the film that I watched of him. You see here, he is going to start his throwing motion right here. He actually will pump fake, as you'll see, but here's the receiver he's trying to throw to. He's going to throw it right around here, a little past the hash marks, and he's got to throw it in between this window of this guy here, this guy here, and then there's a safety that will pop onto the screen once I hit play. But he's throwing this ball already, and the wide receiver has not even cleared that first defender. So this is very impressive anticipation. You've also got to make a strong throw because this looks like a pretty big gap, but these are Division I athletes, even though FCS. They can cover some ground quickly. They can see where he's going with the ball, and he still makes it. So here you go. Right in the perfect spot. Leads him, leads the receiver, makes a low throw, I think probably on purpose because if you sky that ball, the safety can come in, make a big hit, um, or potentially even pick it off if the ball is not caught. So just a perfect throw by Davis right here. All right, now here's a part of his game I really like. He d I mentioned he doesn't have the strongest arm, but when he has a clean pocket to throw, he can get the ball down the field with ease. Um, and as you'll see here, this is going to be about a 45-yard throw, um, really on a laser, not really a high arcing ball that you'll see from a guy like Brady Olsen, really just putting it on the money, has to get it over the two defensive backs, does so perfectly while allowing his receiver to stay in bounds and make the relatively easy catch so a nice throw there by Davis then in the next play again clean pocket he's going to make this throw a little bit early as you see he's going right for this receiver on the right side receiver does not have any separation right now but he trusts him uh, the defensive backs for Charleston Southern were terrible it was really hard to watch Western Carolina put up almost 50 points against them I think it was so um, this was Davis's best game of the season. Um, and you'll see here, he's just going to lob this ball up. Um, no separation, but just puts it in the perfect spot for the receivers where he doesn't really have to do anything else other than put his hands out and secure the ball. Defensive back makes an effort, but can't knock it away. This one here in the spring game, actually going to throw to Gino Campiotti, who was quarterbacking for UMass a lot last season now at tight end position I think he can do a good job there but here we go as you'll see not not the longest throw but um, just a nice job not a lot of separation puts it on a dime right for Gino to bring that one in so really just a nice play overall um, by Carlos Davis now we're going to get into some of the critique of Davis so I mentioned he's really good throwing to the sideline. One thing he needs, he definitely needs improvement on, is throwing towards the middle of the field on in-breaking routes. So, for example, slant routes and just other routes of that nature. You'll see here, this is a potential touchdown. Uh, he's going to have this receiver. Let me get a better freeze frame if I can. Yeah, right here. He has about two to three yards of separation. If Davis leads him right towards the top of this A, or at least um, just further over to the right, it's going to be an easy touchdown, assuming the wide receiver catches the ball. But instead, this defensive back gets burnt. He's not looking for the ball at all, and it's going to go right off of his helmet. Um, and as you see there, the receiver kind of just bringing his hands back to try, to try to catch this ball, but he can't do so. If this ball... We're right around that A again would have been a pretty easy catch and an easy touchdown and uh, would, have, would have helped Western Carolina obviously on this possession. Then we're going to go to the next possession here. This is an RPO, so a nice read. Um, and immediately this was one of the plays that I was a little unsure of just because I think he may have meant to throw a little bit behind his receiver because there is a safety coming in. Um, so let's just watch it. You see there, receiver has to kind of jump back for it. Uh, ends up just kind of going to the ground here. But I think if you do lead this receiver, he ends up making the catch fairly easily before the safety can get to him. Um, and then if he breaks that tackle, he could be home free. Uh, but he throws a little behind him. Can't really blame him. They're just trying to get the first down. They did so. Um, so overall, not too unhappy with this throw that he made i think it was the right decision and you get the first down no harm um so yeah you see him go down there 
Um, this one, apologies, this was coming off of a replay in the actual broadcast, so there's not a lot of footage of it, but it caught my eye just because it's another one of these uh, in-breaking routes. He throws it, and just a little bit behind the receiver where he's going to have to try to bring his hands in um, right into the defensive back who makes a nice play to break up the pass. Again, not a terrible throw, probably not high danger, probably not going to be intercepted, but um, he, you do need to make those throws at the high, at this high of a level. So uh, something I thought was worth pointing out. Now, in the spring game, uh, Davis did a little bit of a better job throwing these slant-type routes. So here we're going to see Isaac Ross in the slot. A um, little bit of an RPO action, I think, anyways, or just a play action, but he's looking at these linebackers to see if they give him space to throw, looking at the nickel corner as well. Um, so he sees Ross open, going to make this throw. Uh, ends up being a little bit behind him. Uh, this actually might be Harding. I can't quite tell, but um, ends up being a little bit behind him, so he's not going to be able to pick up any yards after catch. Still makes the play, still makes a decent throw, so can't really complain. Picks up the first down, but... Maybe if that throws a little bit ahead of him, as we'll see in a clip coming up, uh, that, that could turn into a much bigger play. Uh, now, second throw, same type of thing. Has Campiotti right here. Pretty nice um, anticipation. He's not quite open yet, as he's clearing Falai, but um, I, I think that this was a nice decision to make this throw just a little bit behind him, as you see Terry Powell just a little bit slow reading that a little bit slow getting his hand out there can't break up the pass um and just a nice job by campiotti to bring this pass in and get some yardage but again nitpicky stuff by davis still made a good throw um and just a, si a sign of improvement there is really the the main reason i wanted to bring this up now what can happen when davis does make these throws and does lead his receivers for yards after catch well I'm going to show you right here. He's going to have, this was on a, a little bit of an RPO. The safety will drop down into the box so he knows he's going to have this slant wide open. We'll play it here. Perfect throw right on the money. Allows his receiver to catch and run at the same time. He's going to take this one to the house for the touchdown. And the way UMass is built, they're not going to have guys that are going to make these catches in the uh, when they're closely guarded, they're going to be separators. They're going to try to get yards after catch. And when you have receivers like that, you need a quarterback that can put balls in places where they allow their receivers and they allow whoever is catching the ball to run with it afterwards. So that that is one of the main things that concerns me about Davis. Um, this was another a, n another nice play, actually, by Davis, where he does lead the receiver. You see it was an RPO. The nickel corner drops back, um, thinking it's a run. Davis pulls it out quick and throws a strike to the slot receiver for the first down. All right, so the next part is, as I mentioned, Carlos Davis does not have the strongest arm when he throws with any power. He needs to have a good base. And when I talk about a base, I mean his throwing, uh, like his legs and stuff like that, and being able to generate power from his legs. So on this one, this is an outbreaking route, which he is typically pretty good at making those throws. Um, but he does get a little bit pressured here. And as you see, he is falling away as he's throwing this. Um, it is good anticipation. Isaac Ross is not open yet, but he trusts him to get open. He's going to be running an out route. He does get open. Um, and maybe Davis thinks he's going to take this one a little bit shallower, but um, either way, he ends up throwing this one, and it just falls short of Isaac Ross right there. As you can see, if this ball is about three yards, two yards further, Ross makes the catch um, before going out of bounds for the first down. The next one uh, I wanted to look at, this is back at Furman, um, an interception coming up here. So what he does is he is... Um, rolling out to his right, and he's going to try to make like a jump throw right here. As you see, his feet both off the ground while he's getting hit, really, by his own lineman. And as I mentioned, he's not the type of guy that can just make these strong throws on the run or from weird angles. He needs a strong base. Um, 
So it's okay to make a jump throw when you're 5 to 10 yards out, but when you're 25 to 30, eh, I don't think it's the greatest idea. Um, so as you see here, this one just float her up in the air and the safety comes over to make a nice play. But here you see, just throws that up. And when you're throwing in the middle of the field, you really got to have some some strength and some power on the ball that you throw just because that's typically where most of the defenders are or typically where most of the defenders can get to um, when they know where you're throwing the ball. So see this ball just stays in the air for way too long. And um, number six, the safety just is going to come in and make a nice play on it. This is his second interception that I looked at um, against Charleston Southern getting pressured. I don't think he sees this guy coming in on him um, from not his blind side, but from his right side where he's not really looking. Um, just gets hit on the throw. That's why it was such a bad throw. Um, so I'm not blaming him for that aspect, but the overall decision making where, as you're going to see here, he's falling away as he's throwing it, where even if he doesn't get hit um, with his arm strength and with two defenders near the end zone at the very best, this is probably an incompletion. Um, and thrown out of bounds, but um, overall, not a great decision. And I mean, it was really just ended up being an easy interception for e either one of the defenders that was there. Um, and number 25 happened to get there first. So um, another one of those. And then the final interception I wanted to look at, this is one where it looks like he gets hit on the throw, but he actually doesn't. There's no contact until after the throw happens. So here you see there, gets hit. And it's just like a almost an end over end, like not a good throw at all. Came out of his hand really weird and uh, very underthrown, thrown behind the receiver and just an easy but actually a nice catch by the defensive back. But you see there, he gets hit but does not get touched here. Okay, so this is where to look. Doesn't get touched, doesn't get touched. He gets this ball off clean except... This is a very awkward angle. It kind of looks like he's almost throwing a Hail Mary. But, um, yeah, it gets hit after, but really this ball just supposed to be, if this can load, supposed to be closer towards the middle of the field, ends up being on the other side, the wrong side of the hash marks. And there you go. The defender makes the pick. Now, another thing I wanted to point out, his running is very good. But his decision-making running, I think, can be better. Um, so what I'm talking about here, he is going to get pressured. Here it is. He gets pressured, steps up in the pocket. He has about five yards here. Let's We'll c call it four yards by the time he actually clears uh, Billy Wooden here, I think that is. Um, he's got K. Ron Adams running a route, which he should know that Adams is running a route. He's not blocking. Uh, and then two linebackers right here. It's at this point he decides he's just going to tuck it and run. He is not going to throw this ball. Uh, his mind is made up. The best quarterbacks are still looking to throw this ball here because you're going to be able to get the most yards that way. So uh, he has Falai open here. There's a defensive back just off the screen, but keep in mind Falai is about six foot six, huge target. You put it anywhere near his hands, he's going um, to at least. The, at least, the ball will at least be incomplete. It's not going to be an interception. So uh, I, I think the move here would be throw it right there. Um, if he can square his feet up a little bit, he has the space to do so. Um, but instead, he's just going to run right into Jerry Roberts here. And obviously, they can't tackle in spring games. But um, it probably would have just been a gain of three or four instead of a first down. Another play I was looking at was this one right here. Very similar type of decision-making process. He gets pressured, uh, sees that, makes a really nice play, by the way, to get out of this sack. Not a lot of guys can... Um, number seven is practically unblocked here, and he just evades that. Um, Going to have to kind of evade another guy, just runs by him. Um, and at this point, he has about uh, three yards or so to make this throw um, and this is just as wide open as you can get right on the sideline. This receiver was calling for the ball. You get this ball to him. He's just one-on-one. -on -one. It can at least get to the 13, 12 yard line, break a tackle, score a touchdown. And, um, can't blame him too much. It is second down, second and one. So he does pick up the first on this play, but 
like to see him make that throw and not take a hit like this one. That was a tough freeze frame there, but um, if you can avoid hits like this, as I mentioned, as a quarterback who's not the biggest guy, definitely a good thing to do. Okay, one last thing with uh, Carlos Davis. When he's running, I want to see him get to the outside a little bit more. Again, as I mentioned, not the biggest guy. So when he's going in and running up the middle, unless there's a huge hole, he's not going to get a whole lot out of it just because it's not very hard to bring him down if you can get a hand on him. Um, so here we see here, this is a designed run. He's going to take it, and right here, if he can just go around his blocker, number 77, to the right side, he has Mark Pope blocking down the field. He could pick up maybe at least five, four, five, six yards and get out of bounds. Keep in mind, 51 seconds left in the game. It is just spring practice, or a spring game, so obviously timing is not front of mind, but either way, um, you'd like to see him get the sideline. Instead, he tries to go up the middle and just get swarmed by... Um, a whole group of big tacklers, a lot of big defensive linemen, and uh, that's not going to work out as it's, they mark him down at around the line of scrimmage. Then the next play, same type of thing. This one, I'll give him a little more, I'll cut him a little more slack for this one. Um, steps up in the pocket. If he goes to the outside here, it's a little bit easier, but maybe he doesn't see this defensive tackle coming. Um, ends up having to break that tackle. Um, and then third and eight here, so he needs to pick up the first down. If he can extend this play by maybe not even running and not scrambling, but just extend the play, run horizontally with the line of scrimmage and try to get one of your receivers open, um, especially when you see these defensive players running in at him like this, like it's probably a good chance he's going to get one of these two receivers open, um, at least enough to throw the ball away um, or try to force it to them. But um, he doesn't do that, ends up just running get stopped another weird tackle and they don't get the first down so overall i would say my analysis of carlos davis he is i think probably least likely to start um in their first game of the season i think in new mexico it is um i just think he has more improvement that he still needs to make um and his his floor is much lower than some of the other guys that they have on this team like a, a brady olsen and well, I'll get into Fomachan and uh, Ahmad Haston later as well. But I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the breakdown video. As I mentioned, I'm giving Carlos Davis the least likely to start. But um, if he can improve for a year and get some reps, maybe he can um, develop that passing game a little better and make some better decision making. But um, yeah, thank you guys for watching this breakdown. Going to have more coming up later. Make sure to shoot me a follow on Twitter for more UMass football content, more um, UMass sports comment, com, excuse me, content. This has been Josh Schreiber for WMUA Sports signing off, and thank you so much for watching.